I wonder if you're concerned at all that uh, we will just see innovation to the fore and, and, and those with something to hide might continue to innovate to keep their identities hidden and you won't be able to maybe uh, get a, a firm handle on who owns what in the UK property market. Well, they can try, but what we've done is from the start taken a very strong and uncompromising position. This is the largest set of sanctions uh, ever uh, issued against a, a major country, and we're determined to make it as effective and as broad as possible. So the announcements we've made on the register of uh, overseas entities and, and the beneficial ownership of those entities is something that we've uh, we're taking through Parliament urgently, mm. um, and we will be looking at all ways to ensure that it can't be something that, that individuals or entities can get around. I think that something in this uh, in this document suggests that maybe you will have the powers to seize crypto assets. So is this something that the Treasury is concerned about, that, uh, that, that some Russians might try to get round, around sanctions by using crypto assets? What exactly can you do on that front? Well, throughout, we've been working across the G7 with the US and with, with our friends in Europe uh, and the Western world to make sure these interventions are as comprehensive as possible. And that will involve looking at assets classes of, across uh, the economy um, and we've put a range of measures in already and we will continue to work with our allies to, to make sure that they're effective across other other methods that people may try and use so, so so you know we will continue to intensify our efforts as the prime minister said uh, in poland just an hour ago as we as we work in a coordinated way to make sure there's nowhere that these uh, individuals and entities can hide Mr. Secretary, I was just talking with our reporter on the ground in Warsaw, Maria Tadeo, about the, um, the amount of aid, weapons aid, being given from the EU to Ukraine. It seems incredibly small, denominated in millions rather than billions, especially considering the fact that um, we give Vladimir Putin billions of dollars a week for um, his oil and gas exports. In fact, it amounts to about $230 billion last year, and that number is going to be much higher now at these prices. Is it all right to continue um, buying things from Vladimir Putin, financing, in effect, his war effort? Well, I think the, the measures we've taken in terms of shutting major Russian banks out of the banking system, putting significant restrictions on the way that the Russian central bank reserves can be used and the way they can interact. But we've seen the enormous impact on the stock market, a massive fall in stock values. We've seen the impact on the value of the ruble. We've seen uh, unprecedented falls in, 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 in the state of the economy, doubling of interest rates to 20% in Russia. I don't think these interventions are insignificant. Uh, of course, there are significant challenges with um, uh, energy. Uh, those things can't be changed overnight. But I think the determination and the range of interventions that the British government has, has put up with their, its allies has been considerable. And, this, and the impact has been felt in those measures that I've mentioned. Mr. Secretary, you mentioned the sanctions on Russian banks. Do you see a future for Russian banks, the likes of VTB in London? Well, at the moment, uh, th these uh, Russian, uh, major Russian banks uh, are being frozen out of the norms of, it, of international uh, banking behaviours. Their, their, their routes to market are restricted, and uh, this is a direct consequence of the unprovoked uh, intervention they've taken in Ukraine. Uh, I can't speak to where we will end up on this, but uh, we are determined that the uh, Russian government, the Russian uh, economy will feel the effects of the decisions that President Putin has taken uh, in Ukraine. And are you happy for shares of Russian entities, uh, 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 Secretary, to continue to be traded in London? Because you'll know that a number of Russian businesses, of course, have listings in Russia. They're not able to trade right now, but they're trading in London. Is that something that you see continuing? Well, we continue to work with our allies across uh, the, 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 the globe to look at in, the appropriate in, interventions and the intensification of those interventions is something that we're uh, committed to uh, as this crisis develops. Uh, we, we don't take anything off the table, but obviously we also look at the effects and what behaviours will ensue from whatever decisions we make. We've got to make sure that we make those decisions as we did with SWIFT.
in alignment with our allies, and particularly in the US uh, and, and Europe, to make sure that they're effective. And we will continue to have those conversations at that global level.